For more here, let's bring in the author behind the report, Liz Everett Chrisberg, head of Bank America Institute. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And maybe you can kind of add some color to the concern that Mike was just expressing there. I mean, what would you say is the health of the consumer overall at this point? I think when you look at the headline and overall consumer spending, it's really stabilizing. It's coming off the peaks of last year, but we're, we're kind of in a consistent spot. What I think is interesting and what we're able to do within Bank of America Institute is dig into the data of the 68 million consumer and small business accounts and understand where the divergence is between different groups. So one of the ones that people are thinking about right now and that we uncovered in our data is the difference between spending trends between homeowners and renters. Hmm, interesting. And you would think that higher interest rates, higher inflation would be disproportionately infecting homeowners because they have mortgages. But the reality is, before the rate hikes, only 1% of outstanding mortgages were floating rate. So 99%, and it's a little bit less than that now, have fixed rate mortgages. So they're kind of insulated totally. from that change. Whereas if you're a renter, you're renewing your lease. And what we've seen since rent inflation really started at the beginning of last year is about a two percentage point difference between the spending of homeowners and renters, where renters are pulling back because they they have, have to, to pay more rent. Yeah, right. and it's interesting because you'd think that would correlate to maybe homeowners are more high income and renters more middle income, but then you see almost the opposite trends for those kind of income cohorts. What's going on there? Is this the yeah. white collar recession effect or the well, tech layoffs? I, th I think when you look at the homeowners and the renters, we're actually seeing that consistently across the different income profiles. But to the point you were just making, if you look at spending patterns between lower and middle income households and higher income households, the lower and middle income are continuing to spend. The higher income households have actually started to contract. And there's really, I think, one reason for that that we've identified looking at our data, which is wage and income growth. Hmm. So what sectors are continuing to hire? What sectors are continuing to have spending? Leisure, services. And we're seeing that not in necessarily in the, well, actually, we are seeing it in the data of income coming into the consumer deposit accounts, but also in our small business data. So just this morning, we released our small business checkpoint, which looks at payroll payments. Mm -hmm. So not on who's getting the money, but who's paying the money. And their payroll payments are up about 2% in June, but a big difference in sectors. Year on year or month on month? Year or? on year. Wow. So lodging. This is, let me just pause for a second to yeah. point out how shocking this is. Well, first of all, the fact that we don't often see the headline, middle income consumers doing better than high income ones. <laughs> I mean, that itself is not where it's kind of the media or our, our sense tends to go. And it's important to highlight as you have. But the other thing is what you said about small business. We were told and warned that by this point in the cycle, small businesses would be facing 9 or 10% rates on loans, massive problems from the banks, which kind of goes back to Fed hikes and, and Silicon Valley and all the rest of it, and that that's where we'd be seeing the hiring pullback, and that's where we'd be seeing the weakness and the recession that Mike is talking about that he keeps yeah. expecting was going to show up there first. And now you're talking about trends that kind of point in the opposite direction. Well, it depends on what sector you're looking at. So if you're looking at lodging, if you're looking at restaurants, their payroll spending growth is up 13%, 6%. Construction, you were just talking about residential yeah. construction, that's up 6%. But those are usually what we think of as lower income, lower earning sectors. If we look on the flip side, finance, real estate, insurance, payroll spending growth there actually contracted in wow. June, down 2%. And that fits in with the narrative that we're seeing in our data as it relates to the higher income consumer. And maybe also helps explain why it's such a confusing economy right now, where we do see certain parts of it that are under pressure and then other parts holding up well. What does this tell you on aggregate? Well, I think in aggregate, you don't want to look at the aggregate. And yeah. that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the issue. It's not, you know, we're not in Lake Wobegon. Everyone's not the same.